Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word. This is your daily podcast which spends a few minutes exploring God's Word. We are continuing our study in 1 Corinthians. We're in chapter 7, looking at verses 21 through 24. And I'll be sharing from the New King James Version. These verses are an example of the principle that Paul has been speaking of, which is uh, the way that you started, not to change. Uh, the last scriptures, verses 18 through 20, use the practice of circumcision. And the previous section before that, he looked at the principle that you can live where you are right now. And that was verse 17. So verse 17 is the one that he's going to keep alluding to. So let's listen to verses uh, 21 through 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 21 through 24, read from the New King James Version. I'll be back with insights and we'll close with prayer. Hi, this is Hope Scott. I am your host of the podcast, Five Minutes in the Word, which you're listening to right now. I pray that as you listen, you gain fresh insights as we study God's Word together. Five Minutes in the Word is not only available on your favorite podcast apps, including Amazon and Spotify and even YouTube. You can now listen at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every morning on KingdomPraiseRadio.com. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 21 through 24 from the New uh, King James Version. New Living Translation reads, Are you a slave? Don't let that worry you. But if you get a chance to be free, take it. And remember... If you were a slave when the Lord called you, you are now free in the Lord. And if you were free when the Lord called you, you are now a slave to Christ. God paid a high price for you, so don't be enslaved by the world. Each of you, dear brothers and sisters, should remain as you were when God first called you. And that, again, was New Living Translation. Verse 24 is the uh, point that Paul is making in this passage, that we, you are to remain as you were when God called you. He used circumcision before. Now he's talking about slavery. Those who were uh, circumcised, don't be uncircumcised, which was a painful procedure. Procedure. Those who were uh, circumcised did not have to become, uh, did not have to uh, be circumcised. God looked at, God still looks at the heart. And now he's using the example of slavery. From, um, he's going from circumcision to another uh, social status in that church. And, that, and the social uh, status of the believers in that church. The church in Corinth included people from every station in life. Many of them were slaves. And again, many of them were probably circumcised, and many were uncircumcised. But anyway, it says, Therefore, if a believer was a slave when he became a Christian, he could remain a Christian and a uh, continue as a Christian slave, doing his work as for the Lord. Of course, they were also uh, free to seek freedom, but in the meantime, they should obey God in that position that they were in. 
So again, remain in the state that you were in when God called you. Until again, in the case of the slave, if you can seek your freedom, you know, do so. Slavery was common throughout the Roman Empire. So many of the uh, believers in Corinth were slaves when the Lord called them. Paul said that although the Christian slaves remained enslaved to other human beings, they were free from the awful power of sin in their lives. And you have to remember that they were coming from the pagan culture where there was a lot of, uh, especially sexual immorality and eating of meats that were offered to idols and offering um, uh, sacrifices to idols. So that, of course, was not godly and against the, uh, the will of God. So they were free from the awful power of sin in their lives. These slaves had been made free. In the same way, if a person was free when the Lord called him, he is now a slave to Christ. And he's a slave to Christ because God paid a high price to bring his people to himself. He has complete authority over their lives. And again, Paul is uh, repeating what he said in verse 17 and verse 20, that uh, to stay in the situation you were in when you were called, that uh, you should serve God in that position, seeking to share the gospel with those who might otherwise, might not otherwise hear it. And that was from Life Application Study Bible. And then from Faith Life and also Pulpit Commentary and Ellicott's Commentary, um, it says that some believing slaves in Corinth may have been concerned that their social status inhibited them for, from living for God. And Paul said, of, of course, your status, God is not looking at that. He's looking at your heart. That's not going to inhibit you from serving God. And then a pulpit commentary says that when Paul is talking about a freed man in verse 22, the Lord's freed man, he's uh, clearly, he's uh, talking about um, those who are now servants of Christ. Uh, it's uh, opposite of what he just said about the slaves. And they're freed men to the work of because now they're slaves to Christ they knew that the bondage of Satan was so crushing that mere earthly bondage was in comparison nothing and that the liberty wherein Christ had made them free that um, it might seem to take the form of service but it was uh, perfect it was, per it was still perfect freedom the freed man of sin are the most hopeless slaves. The servant of God alone are free. That was from pulpit commentary. It made more sense when I read it before I wrote it down. But we understand that Paul is saying that uh, those, first he said, if you were a slave before, now you're free. And now those who were free, because of the uh, price that Christ blood paid for your for you you are now slaves to god and you're free from the bondage of sin and then uh, verse 23 ellicott says that uh, we, you were bought with a price you were bought with the price therefore become not a slave of men this carries the idea of freed men in the previous verse and a great price is, of course, the blood of Christ. That price that God paid was the blood of Christ. And that blood purchased our freedom, purchased by him. And therefore, do not become slaves of men. Do not yield to their views by seeking to change the position of your calling. Paul urges believers not to become enslaved to human wisdom or troubled by the traditions of marriage, slavery, or circumcision. He wants us to focus on Christ and his work on the cross. And then he says, Let every man, every man 
uh, stay in that position in where you, uh, which you were called. Here we have an earnest reiteration of that principle. Let the converted man abide as regards his social and political state as he was when he was called by God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you as we continue studying, studying your word. We know that slavery is a touchy subject, so it's not one that anyone wants to freely talk about at any time, in any, especially after the, uh, America's history of slavery. Not that we're uh, the only country that had slavery, but slavery in America was harsh harsher than anywhere else, so it's hard to just discuss it or even read about it. Uh, so we're going to just thank you for your word. Thank you for commentaries to help make sense of the word. Pray that as I share, that I rightly uh, divided, or rightly shared your word so that those who hear can understand and uh, apply what the principle is. And the principle is that whatever state you're in, whether free or slave, circumcised, uncircumcised, married or single, whatever state you're in, when you're called, God still loves you because he's looking at your heart. He's not looking at your situation in life, your state in life. He's looking at your heart. So trust him and love him and do his will. Father, we're... Um, praying for those who need you in a special way, praying for our president, even though it wasn't uh, what we expected, but we thank you because we know you're in charge. You know We know that you're going to protect the household of faith. So we're thanking you in advance, Father, for that angel protection that's going to be over this nation and continue to be over this nation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time studying God's Word with me. Like and follow 5 Minutes in the Word on your favorite podcast apps, including Amazon and YouTube. Be blessed.